Let's speak about the innovative nations. I mean, the Netherlands, they financed the report also from the FAO. They financed research about edible insects. Why the Netherlands? Because why not well, Switzerland? I asked myself, <laughs> you know, because... Well, a lot of people don't realize we are an extremely small country, but in value, we are the second in the world for exporting agricultural products. Yeah. So the Netherlands want to keep ahead of all kinds of developments. So the government is also interested, you know, to innovate uh, in this sector. Uh, so that's why we received some money from the government to have this project on proteins of, uh, of the insects. Um, but another thing is um, you need also a private industry who is interested. And I always say you need three parties. You need the government who is enhancing the sector, you need a private enterprise, and you need the academia. Those three can really make a difference, and that's what's happening in the Netherlands. And also I think the, um, the governmental guidelines for edible insects in, in the Netherlands or also in Belgium, they are more pragmatic than, let's say, in Switzerland. Or it's, it seems first that it's very pragmatic, or in the European uh, Union. Why that? Well, I think our food safety authorities they did some evaluations. And of course, there's now the EFSA report, yeah. Uh, yeah. European Food Safety Authority, on edible insects. But if you look at all the instances when there are problems, it's all about contamination. So if you rear them hygienically, there are no problems, to my opinion, whatsoever. And we have now how long a history of eating insects in the Netherlands? Um, five years when mm -hmm. we have been in the supermarkets. I don't know of one problem during all those five years with edible insects, not on food safety. So I think it is just a matter of time before uh, it will be allowed uh, and the legislation uh, will also allow them to give them, because for it's easier to feed insects to humans than to animals. That's also very strange, but it's the case. Yeah, that and that's all only because of the BSE crisis, in which they said animals are not allowed to be fed right. to animals. Yeah. So that is now causing the problems. But they said they changed it. Now well, the they, changed, of the they changed it for agriculture, and they also there was a, the slaughterhouse problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is now solved. Uh, so I think from the 1st of July onwards, it's allowed to feed them to... Uh, to uh, in agriculture, but not yet for poultry and pigs. Mm -hmm. And that's a market of about 300 okay. billion US dollars. It's yeah. an enormous market. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think mostly in the feed sector, poultry and fish uh, are waiting for this new uh, so. protein? Uh, yeah, and, from and, and those companies uh, like Agri Protein in South yeah. Africa, but also uh, Protex here in the Netherlands, uh, they have already facilities yeah. which they can replicate easily in other uh, countries. Um, so I think that will really, uh, yeah, that will really uh, go very quickly. But is this not a strategy that goes against the strategy of the FAO that wants to uh, wanted to introduce edible insects for the food security of of, of the human mankind on planet Earth? So if you take the insects away from them and giving them to chicken and fish again? <coughs> well, again, uh, we have a proverb in the Netherlands, uh, a farmer does not eat what he does not okay. know. Yeah, okay. uh, so that it's takes... the same in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that takes some time. But uh, I think eventually, if I, if I look at 20 years ago, I gave my first lecture in the Netherlands. Nobody knew in the Netherlands that you could eat insects or very few people. Yeah. Now everybody knows it. Yeah. And it's often on the television, you know, it's, it's often on radio programs. Um, and often if I give a lecture and I ask people how many people have eaten insects, then half of the hands go up already. So that's a tremendous change in just 20 years ago. You have also, to, as a uh, Netherlands, have, uh, from early colonies, you have connection to Africa, to uh, Southeast Asia. Um, aren't there some a cultural group that come to the government and say we want to have our insects <laughs> allowed for eating in the Netherlands? We, we are also... Uh, Not so much, as far because as I know. I, I think in 
it's more in uh, in Belgium, uh, for example, in Brussels, there are lots of people from from Africa. Okay. And uh, I think there, for example, they they introduce uh, or they import the Mopane caterpillar. Yeah. As, okay. Uh, as food. Oh, that's so, what it, okay. It's allowed now. Uh, if it is allowed, for internet, everything is allowed. So. Ah, okay, <laughs> they are on the internet. That is because I heard a story from uh, Heathrow, London, <coughs> yeah. uh, where a man from South Africa was uh, caught, take, t taken out by the border control. Yeah, Wait if they get you. Of yeah. Mopar, they were <laughs> in his package, and yeah. he couldn't yeah. take them in. So also from Thailand, of course, a lot of insects that are traditionally used in the, in the in the kitchen there, they cannot buy it in the shops yeah. officially. That's a problem. I, I, for me, I think always, why not asking the people that are already here? We have in Switzerland one quarter of all the inhabitants are from from abroad, from yeah. other country. Yeah. So why not ask them what they want to eat and, yeah. make, and make this legal? Yeah, but you still have also the, uh, you know, I found that also during my trip in Africa. As soon as people get educated, you know, I met teachers, yeah. and those teachers told me, well, in the past we used to eat insects, yeah. now we are educated, yeah, now yeah, we yeah. don't do it anymore. Okay. So still that notion of it's poor man's diet, um, and I think that has to change, of course, that perception. Yeah, the middle class uh, is also taking part in the stigmatization of entomophagy, exactly. also in Africa. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah. Also what Paul... Van Tomei also told me that's one of the problems, yeah. and he would be very happy to hear that Switzerland uh, is the first to introduce insects mm -hmm. and yeah. edible animals. So you you already did that in in, in the Netherlands on the on the on the national scale, but not yet on the European scale. So, but it is officially in the Netherlands introduced as edible animals insects, or is it just uh, tolerated somehow? Well, they don't call it uh, tolerated, but anyway, uh, yeah. you know, you can buy the insects in the supermarkets, yeah. you can buy them in lots of shops, so there is no problem uh, here. It's only, uh, of course, with the novel food regulation, that the companies who are selling now the insects, they have to apply yeah. for a license. And they are doing that? <coughs> they are doing that. And they are on the way, and uh, yeah. because I heard that they, need to, or they have to do that within two years now. They have to do it before the end of this year. And if they have applied, then the European Union will take two years to decide what they are going to do with it. And for what so. kind of species they do it? Uh, I think it's the house cricket, it's mealworms, different species, and oh, the probably locusts. Yeah. Yeah, the small, the lesser mealworm. The lesser mealworm and I think the, the yellow mealworm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Both, both of them. Yeah. And cricket? <coughs> Crickets, I think, and also, yeah. Ojeto, domestico. Yeah. Yeah, and the locusto, migratorio, yeah, yeah. Okay. So well, there was a discussion about, yeah, why only locusto, why not chisto, well, yeah. they got it. So that. But there are 2,000 insects, so. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> 2,000 yeah, so edible ones, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but why <laughs> on the species uh, level, you know, you could say. Yeah, but those are the species that are reared here in the Netherlands. Yeah. <clears throat> so they consider that the obvious ones to okay. start with. Yeah. I also thought that we, we had the uh, same problem around 50, 60 years ago when we had to regulate uh, mushrooms mm -hmm. uh, in the food law. So we, we choose another way there. And I, I also asked the people from the regulatory um, uh, bodies, why not do the same? You know, we have, we have introduced all the edible uh, uh, mushrooms on a list, on a positive list. And then we, we said uh, which one can be cult cultivated. And, and all the, the, why not with insects? Just make a big list and say all these are if they uh, comply with food hygiene. Yeah, but all the, all the insects are different. I know <coughs> that our government or, or the, our Food Safety Authority made, uh, let's say, a report for the mealworms. Yeah. And that was already a huge report. So if you have another insect, you have another huge report. So, uh, yeah, it all depends uh, on the species. You cannot just generalize insects, uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. But you think that there will be no insects, wild caught insects on this list because this does comply with uh, sustainability and... and all well, it, uh, I always say in, in the Netherlands, if you want to uh, collect uh, your meal from the wild, it's almost an impossible job. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and for a number of reasons, uh, it, 
difficult to find the insects. We have a temperate climate, so during winter time there are no insects. Um, uh, insects are much smaller than in the tropics, so there are a number of problems. Yeah. And are the insect products really sold in ta in Netherlands and in Belgium? I heard that they mostly use it just as a marketing uh, as a marketing trailer for other products. <coughs> that they are, that they are not massively sold. It's just making a wave, you know, with a uh, public relation for That's the other uh, things around. That's partially true, but I think there was one supermarket chain <coughs> who introduced them in 2015. But I think they did not come with a really delicious product. So they should have done some more research to make it really tasty. And I think that's what is a little bit lacking. But I think the companies are now working <coughs> with those supermarkets to bring something which is much more tasty on the market. Do you think it's a clever strategy to say we have to ground them to a powder and put yeah. them in some burgers instead <coughs> of thinking how we can present them as a whole insect, because people who want to eat insects, they know what the insect looks like. Yeah, but you know, uh, a lot of people prefer a, a filet of meat instead of having a, 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 a chicken leg. They just don't like to see what they're eating. So, uh, people want to be fooled. So, I think it's the same with insects. Grind them and nobody uh, will that's a, that's This kind of... Uh, <laughs> Netherlands, pragmatic thing, I don't understand, <laughs> because we all, people if you go to Thailand and, and they present you uh, their food, they are, they are very uh, proud that you can see what it is, you know, yeah. well, and don't, they, 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 don't they, you think that that can change <coughs> also in our society, it, it depends. that you realize yeah. that, that, that you depends on the target group really, if you have, I would say there are of course maybe 10% of the people who want to eat insects as they are, because they want to see what they eat. But uh, a lot of people don't want to see it. So I think those, uh, those people prefer if they are disguised. And you can put them in bread, you can put them in, in noodles, you can put them in a lot of other and things. And you think they accept it, even if they don't really want to eat them? If, if they are in noodles and it is, and it is or in biscuits or in bread and the okay. bread tastes nice, why not? Mm. Yeah. And what's the argument for the consumer then? So that it's cheaper or better or more sustainable? Or <laughs> more nutritious. <laughs> more nutritious, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you think that this, micro, uh, this micronutrition thing is, uh, is then the Yeah, the or, or just the proteins, uh, if you have uh, some bread with some more uh, proteins, animal proteins in Okay. Them, why not? So yeah. they don't care where it comes from, so it's, it's just uh, the proteins yeah. itself. So the and you have of course those protein bars, uh, which are very popular in the United States, the cricket bars, uh, and there you absolutely don't... Yeah. Uh, you don't uh, recognize the insect at all, yeah, yeah. even when I mean, you taste them. You like taste for bodybuilders, this powder thing? Yeah, yeah. You, you taste a lot of other things, but not the insects. So, yeah. yeah, okay. So, originally the, the FAO report was made to help the people in countries where there's not enough water to produce other kind of uh, animal proteins, or it not, doesn't make sense to produce other kind of animal proteins, it would be better to to do it with insects. Is there also something going on in this sector, how to help the people uh, subsistence agriculture with insects in Africa? Because this would be probably one of the needed things. And that is, I think, where these projects are working on and also some of the companies are working on. Okay. Um, to make it, uh, well, really uh, an easy to rear uh, food product. So, yeah. Because we here in Europe, we have everything, we whether we eat now insects yeah. or not, it's not a big thing. Yeah. I, I also have a lot of this, uh, yeah, uh, PR uh, people, they say, they also said, yeah, if you don't ground it to a powder, they have no chance on the, mar on the market. But if we compare it to, let's say, 40, 50 years ago, what in Switzerland had with seafood, not in in the Netherlands, because you, you you know what comes from the sea, but in Switzerland, my mother, they, she always said, no, uh, this shrimp, this, I never will eat this worms like this, you know. And 40 years later, it's uh, established uh, high-class food item. 
So, so why not wait with the insects also? Because at that time, 40 years ago, they didn't start to make uh, powder from, hmm. from, the, from the shrimps, you know? It's yeah, just I think it will, it will come gradually. Um, but what I said, I, I think that insects as feet will go quicker than insects uh, as food. And that's simply because it takes some time to turn people's mind around. Um, but I think it will happen, yeah. Yeah, let's speak about honey at the honeybees. That I, will, I want to hear your opinion about that. We have 100,000 beekeepers in Europe producing one, around 1,000 tons of drone brood every year that we throw away. So why not use this as a start for entomophagy? Uh, because it's an yeah. introduced insect, we have a lot of knowledge, pest management, we have health control, everything. Why not? Yeah, I didn't uh, understand this. Yeah. Um, I, I know in Denmark there has been a publication recently about using uh, drones uh, as, as food, and I think why not? Uh, yeah, perfect. Um, because he, instead of throwing them away, why not use them as food? But why was it forgotten? I don't understand this. I also yeah. have seen in the EFSA report, they actually have written that this report excludes all things from apiculture. Dot, finished, no argument. Well, in apiculture, well, in the tropics anyway, uh, honey is often eaten together with the larvae, so yeah, that course. is uh, quite uh, quite common. Uh, but in the Western world, I have no idea whether in in the past people have been eating drones. I I don't know. Uh, I think it's a novel idea. Uh, I think it's okay. I mean, the novel uh, thing about it is that we cut it out only since thirty years because of the boromite. Yeah. So because no, before they just mm -hmm. let the drones. There, whether they need oh, okay. it or not, you know. Yeah. But but now with the strategy against oh, the okay, Boromite, yeah. they introduced this technique to cut out the drones, and that's the new thing, you know. Oh, okay. Before we uh, normally oh, okay. they didn't do yeah, it because they needed I'm the not drones. A bee, yeah. I'm not a and they are really so, taken, yeah. so I leave, I leave you this book <laughs> yeah. to try it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. From May to June, yeah. normally they cut it out, and now we have um, a lot of support from apiculturists in Switzerland that wants to take part in that program to, okay. to, to put it to the fridge. Yeah. Uh, I, only, it. I uh, only know there was recently a, a publication on it, uh, I think by the Danish, if I'm not okay. mistaken. You are aware of it? Or not? Yeah, I think uh, there's a Danish food lab that also cooked yeah, with they, they were bee parts. drones and things. I think yeah. they were but part this of one, that, uh, I, yeah. I, I, I wrote the book because <coughs> I said uh, somebody must say that they, that they forgot the okay. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and our in Switzerland, we have yeah. twenty thousand uh, beekeepers. These are people that work with the cultivation of insects since yeah. generations. They have experience. Yeah. So that's yeah. something interesting. Also, yeah. I did, probably I, I thought you know more about. No, I'm not a specialist in this. this. No, because no, also they are loved yeah. anywhere where you, where, yeah. where they eat insects. This yeah. is one of the most delicious. Yeah. Uh, things that you can take, it's a okay. or, or hornets or wasps. Yeah, also. Yeah. Also, so, yeah. 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 But I thought, yeah, probably the the big industry mm -hmm. they they can't use mm -hmm. this kind mm -hmm. of stuff uh, for industrial upscaling um, the production of edible insects. So yeah, it's still a niche market. That's I something think. very yeah. special yeah. for the food market, yeah. Uh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, stigmatization, you think that uh, this is one of the problems also today in the, in the entomophagous countries that, as you also said, as soon as they go uh, to the middle class, they say, you uh, know, uh, in the early time we did it, but now mm -hmm. we are modern, you know. So yeah, can, and, and that is why I think it's important in the Western world if they copy let's say the Western uh, food habits, yeah. then if we start to eat insects, maybe they will think, oh my God, we have done that for years. Okay. So why not, uh, why not do it as well, so, or promote it. But another important thing I think is urbanization. If, if yeah. you, uh, with the edible insects, if you don't make sure they are available on the market in urban areas, then of course uh, people just can't get them. So that's another uh, issue, of course, to be taken into account. And urbanization, of course, is going on so much mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, so if you, if you need a market. Mm -hmm. If the trade is, uh, is, yeah, like in 
in Thailand also Bangkok it's eating insects is also something like a romantic a flashback to the mm -hmm. earlier times when they were with the grandparents picking the the crickets uh, or, the, or the, the the locusts and eating them. Yeah, but it's also let's say geophagy, the eating of earth. Oh, okay, yeah, which is yeah. very well, yeah. very common throughout the tropics. Yeah. Uh, but in the cities, you don't have uh, termite hills, yeah. okay. so they often take the the, the soil from the termite yeah, hills. Yeah. But what you see in local markets in urban areas is that you can find there pieces of termite okay. uh, hill which people can buy, <laughs> yeah. so it's more or less the same. Okay. Mm. So one more word to the, to the FAO report. When did you meet Paul from Tome? How, how, how it actually came together that you made a team for that report? Because it's mostly a purse between you and, and Paul from Tome. You are yeah, it was, um, I think I was in that meeting in 2008 in Thailand. And that was an FEO meeting, uh, that was regional, Southeast Asia. In the Chiang Mai uh, meeting. That was in yeah, Chiang Mai yeah. meeting. And uh, so then I asked them, um, you know, who is working on edible insects at headquarters? Because I was often at headquarters in Rome because of the locust. I'm also a locust oh, okay. expert. So in 2009 I went to, uh, uh, to Paul van Tomme at the, at the forestry department and he was wor working on non-root forest products. So, and then he asked me, why don't you come and help me to uh, make a policy on edible insects in, in, uh, at FEO? And I said, well, in 2010 I have a sabbatical, so I can, I can come, no problem. <laughs> so I went with a PhD student of mine. Uh, I, we spent there three months in 2010. And uh, we had four tasks. We should write a book. That came out in 2013, and I think that was really a game changer, yeah, yeah. because uh, you know okay. every research article that you read, every uh, newspaper article, it's all about that book. So that was, uh, I think, and they also asked us to make uh, an inventory worldwide of everybody who was working with, with insects. So we had five language, six, seven languages translated a questionnaire, which we sent all over the world. So that became uh, on the website of FAO the stakeholder uh, yep. stakeholder directory. Um, we wrote uh, also a publication. Uh, we, we wrote a policy uh, report, which is also on the website. And they asked us to organize a conference. And that's what we did in 2014. So that was in the Netherlands, where 450 people came together from 45 different countries. And next year, it will be held in China. Okay, yes, now I definitely just got, next year because I already. <laughs> I just got it today. I got it's the really first uh, announcement. I have to check it, and I next think then they, then they will announce it. In I fall, think within what? one month, it will be announced in China. In China. Yeah. Okay, so that's a great nation of people who yeah. eat insects. So yeah. there, we quite some new information coming also to Europe from yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so that so will be really announced. Fast, and what was with your sabbatical? <coughs> was sabbatical was gone then, so it was not a sabbatical. You, <laughs> you worked all through. Then. Yeah, from that time on, of course, we got so many requests. And uh, well, at the moment, I'm retired, but I'm nothing <laughs> yeah. doing nothing else than working on edible insects. So it's my it's a full time job now. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope it keeps you young, <laughs> and uh, you can it work does. for a it lot does. of more yeah. time. Uh, yeah, with yeah. your experience, yeah. and that was a, I mean, it was created in two, three years. The whole wave that yeah, still yeah. is uh, getting bigger and yeah. and bigger now.